Hello, my name's Christian. Today I'll be providing an overview of the Open Solar platform. We started Open Solar to make great software available to installers for free to accelerate the adoption of solar around the world. We're founded by the team that invented remote solar design with tens of thousands of sales and installations in experience using software to sell and design. We're a completely free app and will be free forever. We get paid by hardware and service providers who provide additional value to, to you in the app. It's essentially a win-win for the users and for our partners. You can access OpenSolar online, create an account at opensolar.com, and you can use the browser version, or you can also download OpenSolar on the Google Play and App Store. It's totally white label, so it's yours to shape, and it's completely cloud-based. Starting here on this My Energy page today, you'll notice you have your logo at the top left here. Um, this is the proposal that your customer will see when you send it out to them. It's essentially an end-to-end -end toolkit here. We're looking um, you know, at the, at the last kind of phase of, of uh, the selling process when you send out your proposal. However, you can also use OpenSolar right from the beginning to generate leads, create projects, design systems like I've done here, send out the proposal and close the sale online. So just starting on this My Energy page, which I said is the proposal, um, this is just one of four zones of the app. You also have the control zone here for the admins who can set up the account settings, such as your pricing, your payments, various templates, and I'll dive into that soon. You have the project zone where you create projects um, and enter contact information. Studio zone is where you'll be doing your solar designing and applying the price and the payment options of your system. So beginning on this My Energy proposal today, thought it'd just be good to run you through what your customer will see when you send out their proposal. So you can see I've got two options here, solar and solar and battery. So your customer will be able to select between these two options and compare the pricing differences and all the charts and things will be updated as you select between these different options as well. So you've got your system image, the hardware that will be included in that system, the performance of the system as well. And particularly for the solar and battery option, it's nice to check out this daily energy profile where you can see how your system is performing with the battery charging up and discharging through the evening on a seasonal basis. Coming further down, we have how your system works. Once again, switching between the different options and changing between the partially offset and night settings as well. You can add in your own custom content like I've done here. This is just a basic video that I've put in that talks about the benefits of going solar. Further down, we've got the environmental benefits, a net financial impact of the system, the electricity bill savings, and you've also got some detailed tables that you can access here as well. And I've also put in some testimonials. So once again, this proposal is fully customizable. You can rebrand it as your own and chop and change it to how you prefer. At the bottom, we've got the quotation table. Um, with the currency here, we've got pesos included in our currency database, so you can use that. And we've got the download option here to generate a PDF version of this proposal. If your customer is happy with one of these options, they can go right through with the payment option you provide to accept the proposal. Once doing that, they can read your terms and conditions in this contract area here, check off that they've read those, enter their name, and then they can sign away in this box to confirm. And that is the proposal accepted. So we're kind of looking at it from the customer's end at the moment. You'll now, after they've accepted it, receive um, an email saying that they want to proceed and you'll get a, a signed and downloaded version of this copy in your project files area within this page here. So a few first things to get set up with at the beginning, I would recommend coming into this control area and then jumping into the design and hardware section. 
You can start in these areas here to add in the different componentry that you'll be using for your solar designs. So you've got your panels, your inverters, batteries, and any other components that you want to use. So I recommend jumping in here, clicking on create at the top right, and then searching for the different brands or manufacturers that you typically use. You can also type in the module code if you need to. So for example, if we just type in LG, we'll then get a list of all of the LG panels here. So you might want to put in a number as well, and then you'll get a further short list. So just clicking on these panels, you'll then be able to review the specs. You'll also have the warranties included, and you can update that if you need to, and then hit save here. So that will then add it into this list, which is called your active modules list. These are the ones you'd typically use on a regular basis. And you can follow that same process for the different types of components in here. Now let's take it very back to the beginning. We'll jump into this project zone where we can look at our project list and we can start a new project from scratch together. So in this list, you can star favorite, click into project to view more details, and you can also contact your customers right from the app here as well with these buttons. You can jump through to the app into the studio zone or the My Energy zone quickly by clicking these icons. You can also add filters up here. Um, you have lots of different options there and you can add multiple filters at one time. You can also export all of your project information into a CSV by clicking this download button. Let's create a project together in the Philippines and I'll run you through from beginning to end here. You want to take your address and just write it in or paste it in here, like I've done. Select it from the drop down and specify residential or commercial. You can put in your customer's name here and any contact information as well. Then you can go right through to click on create and design. This will then use Google imagery to load in the map of your site. Once you've done that, you can come over to the left and click on this panel drop down. You can select your panel that you want to start designing with. So choose from this active list, being those ones that I showed you how to set up previously, or if you haven't set any up yet, you can simply go to the module database and type in the code or manufacturer in here. For this example, I'm going to take this Winico panel that I've been using. You can then click on plus panel group and simply just clicking and dragging along the roof face like so. You can then add in your inverter like this, once again selecting the type, and then you can put in any other componentry, put in your pricing here as well, and any payment options that you want to offer too. You can then go right through to the My Energy page. And there you have it. We've already got our first proposal designed with Open Solar. So it's really that quick and easy to use. It just requires a little bit of account setup to get all of your hardware, your pricing, your costing set up. But once that's done, you can pop out proposals in just a matter of 30 seconds, like I've shown you here. But I'm going to jump into a bit more detail today to show you guys around the app and a bit more of the account setup. So let's hop back to this project area. And in this project area, like I showed you before, you have your list of projects at the top left, but you can also jump into particular projects like I've done on this address. Within here, you have your workflow on the top right, which is fully customizable for your business through this design, sell, install, and maintain stages. So you can customize all these actions to suit your processes. You can plan any activities for the project as well by clicking on this button here. You can specify the type of activity, so it might be the on-site installation once I've accepted it. You can write any notes in, and you can assign a team member to that job as well. If you like, you can add a schedule here. So let's say it's happening in two weeks' time on Monday. We'll say it's at 3.30 in the afternoon, and it's going to take two hours. You can then click Save. Once you've done that, you'll see this activity hop up here. It's happening in four days and it's assigned to Dan in this case. 
So if you want to view a list of your activities, then you can hop back to your project list at the top left. You can switch this over to your calendar view, and then you'll be able to see all of the activities coming up. So in this case, this is just showing one of the actions, but you might want to go over to the next. We'll go in two weeks time. You can see here the on-site installation by Dan. So this is a good way to just keep a view of all of your upcoming tasks and activities in OpenSolar. So we'll jump back into this project now. Once that activity has been completed, it will then be logged in this project history tab. You'll also see all of these checkboxes loaded into this project history tab once you check them off and you refresh the page here. So as you can see, they've populated into here. You might also want to write some notes um, to record for your sales members um, or just reminders and you can just click on this notes button and add them in. They'll also be logged into this history log. Within the sales and service area, you can assign different team members to jobs. So you can have your sales team with restricted access so they can only see their own projects that they're assigned to. And in that case, you'd want to come in here and assign the necessary team member to that job. You can then change a priority of this job as well. You can enter any tags in. And once again, these are all customizable for your business. So it's a good way to manage your workflow. You can set the valid until date of this project. Um, and these, this kind of information down here will be populated when your customer accepts the proposal. So it will automatically populate the contract date, you know, what system that they have accepted and what payment option they have accepted as well. On the right hand side, this is where you can enter in all of the site details that you need to by clicking this pen icon and then changing these fields. Very importantly, over here, you have the electricity usage area where you can enter your customer's usage by clicking this pen icon and then changing from a different range of data sources. So let's take, for example, daily kilowatt hour average over one to 12 months. In that case, you can quickly enter in some daily usage for your customers if you have their bill on hand. So let's say, for example, in January, they consume 10 kilowatt hours a day. In February, it's 11 and in March, it's 12. You can then leave that data and this will, um, this will estimate a curve throughout the year based on seasonality. You can also put in their weekday and weekend usage curves here and scale it from weekend to weekday as well. So after in entering in that usage data, you can see we've got here 4,275 kilowatt hours for the year. On the right hand side, you can enter in your customer's utility tariff that they're on as well. You can go in and click on this magnifying glass to search for other utility rates, or you can even uh, take this one that's been automatically applied, look at the details of it, or you can customize the rate in here as well. So if we click on customize here, we'll be able to see the bill frequency, um, the solar compensation mechanism, and then we've also got the various rates in here. So this is the usage rate with the various blocks. We've got the export rate or the feed-in tariff here. And then we've got any discounts and surcharges and tax included as well. So you can simply go in and edit any of these numbers how you like. We have a great training video specifically on setting up these electricity utility rates. And you can find that in our support section and visiting our help center. And just type in here, tariff and you should be able to find the video that we're looking for. So creating custom tariffs there. Jumping back to this page again, and just summarizing with a few final details. Down here, um, this is mainly for, you know, later on once you have sold the system, you can put any installation and compliance information in, and you can also upload files to this job as well. By clicking this upload button here, selecting a file from your computer. And if you want that file to appear on the proposal for the customer, you can select in here, sales proposal or sales proposal equipment documentation. You can also give that file a title. If you don't select any tags, the file will just be stored at the bottom of this project area here. 
Now let's jump into a little bit more detail in this studio zone. So as I showed you before, we painted the panels on the roof by clicking on plus and then clicking and dragging. So I might just repeat that step to show you. Click on plus and then click and drag and set the azimuth while you do that. You can see here, we've got a little yellow line coming out that's facing about 95.1 degrees. In this case, I think the roof is probably facing in a westerly direction, so I actually want to add 180 degrees to that. So if we add, if we add 180 to 95.1, we get 275.1 degrees. Now you can see that they're actually facing in the correct westerly direction. I just want to hit this move horizontal button at the top left to click and drag the panels into the correct space. Okay, perfect. So once you've um, adjusted your panels to be correctly placed, you can then um, enter any other information in here, such as the slope of the roof. Um, or if you have racks, you can click on this button and enter in the degrees of tilt for those racks. So if you have a flat roof and you want to put on tilt of 15 degrees, you can make this zero and make this number 15. You can also change the orientation from portrait to landscape and put any gaps in between your panels by entering um, information in these fields here. Once you've done your panel layout, you can jump into inverters, add in your inverter like I did here. So once again, just selecting from this list or searching our inverter database. You can also add the string of your inverter by clicking on plus stringing. Now we've got our first MPPT with our first string. You can then click on one end of the panel group and click to the other end, and this will string that array. So you can see we've got a string of 11 panels in this case. You can also uh, use microinverters, which will apply one microinverter to one panel. If you'd like to use DC optimizers with your panels, you can click on this button to use DC optimizer and choose the type of optimizer from your hardware list. If you want to add in a different system options for your customer you can do that at the top by clicking on this tab and then clicking on plus system and duplicating it or creating a new system from scratch so in this case let's duplicate it and now we can add in a battery option for our customer you can add in as many options as you like here and then you can retitle them at the top we'll call this one 4.1 kilowatt solar and battery and then this one, let's just call it 4.1 kilowatt solar. We've now got our two options there. Um, and once again, selecting your different type of battery in this area here. And adding any other components that are necessary for this job. Now coming down, we've got a pricing here. You can, uh, you can select your pricing scheme. I've set a Philippines pricing per watt scheme here. So I just want to select that for both. And these pricing schemes are all set up in this control area. You can just ignore the other schemes that I've created. They've actually been suited for the Australian market, but I have set up this Philippines one today. So I'll jump into how to set up those pricing schemes shortly. But if you need to, you can just enter the price manually and type it in here. You can then... Uh, add in your payment options that you want to offer. So I've got a cash payment option, but you can set up other ones in the control zone and I'll also touch on that shortly. If you'd like to, you can switch on Activate Open Solar 3D, which uses a different calculation engine to model the solar output of this system. It uses the System Advisor model here. And if you'd like to learn more about this, you can click on Visit Help Center for details. Perfect. So that's just a general run through of this studio zone. We'll also be doing another deep dive session on this studio zone for doing commercial designs and more complex solar design layouts.
Now we can go through to this control area, hit save and continue to save your progress. And like I said before, this control area is where you'd be setting everything up for your business. So starting this company section, you can enter in your basic business information in here and any info about your company in this area. You can then add in your team members in this section, click on create to add in a new team member, put in their email address, and then if you wanna make them an admin, this gives them access to this control area here. You can customize your workflow by going to this business processes area and changing up your project actions and tags like I touched on earlier. So this is everything that relates to the project zone and managing um, your projects. You can set up pricing and your payment options in here. So like I've done here, I set up this Philippines pricing per watt scheme. You can take a look, I have put in 39 pesos per watt and then 28,800 per kilowatt hour for battery with 12% tax for the Philippines as well. So this is just a basic scheme that I used, um, just a ballpark number, so don't take it too seriously, um, but just an example that I used um, for a pricing scheme that can be used in the Philippines. You can also set up various different pricing schemes by clicking on plus and then changing this pricing formula from price per watt to markup percentage or price per watt by size. If you're using a markup, for example, it's going to take into account all of your cost information in this area. Um, and so it's good to set up all of the costs for your business. And it'll also take into account the cost of all of your hardware that you've entered for each of these components as well. So for example, when you're doing your solar design and you're designing with 10 panels, it will take into the cost of each panel and then mark it up based on 20% in this case. You select auto apply, then it will take this as the default pricing scheme going forward for future projects. Now we can hop into this design and hardware section where you set up your different um, types of hardware. So as I showed you before, your panels, you've also got your inverters and your batteries in here as well. So you click on plus create at the top right and then search for the component that you're looking for. And lastly, I'm just going to wrap up here on this purchase experience area. You have your proposal template and you can create different proposal um, templates. I've also made one specifically for the Philippines in this case. Um, so you can create it and adjust the content as you like. You can also set up your contract template in here as well. So these are the terms and conditions that your customer will have to accept um, when they want to proceed with that proposal. Finally, your checkout experience um, relates to the acceptance. So you can put any payment information in this area here. If you wanna accept a cash payment option or a bank transfer, you can put in your bank details for an internet transfer there. Finally, if there's any tariffs um, or electricity rates that you wanna set up, you can do that here. So you can select them in that project area or you can also set up any incentives here as well. So creating incentives is quite simple. Um, I'm not familiar with any other incentives in the Philippines, but you can set them up here, choose the type. So you might have a performance-based or a size-based or a price-based incentive. So you can set that up here um, and you can choose if it's gonna be paid to the customer or the installer. And that will then all factor into the pricing and the breakdown um, in that My Energy proposal there. Great, and I think that wraps up um, a, a demo of the Open Solar platform today. One last thing that I should definitely tell you before I finish this up is to is how to send the proposal to your customer. So you want to do that in this project zone by clicking this Send Proposal to Customer button. In here, you'll have a default email message that you can actually customize in the control zone. So mine just says, um, you know, please find your solar proposal by clicking the link below because it will always be linked below this message. But you can uh, just modify this on a, you know, customer by customer basis and personalize it a bit more if you like. You can then just click on confirm and send proposal and that will then be sent 
to your contact that you have listed in here. Great. So that's a wrap up of the Open Solar software. Um, I recommend you jumping into this support button at the bottom right, visiting our help center here for lots of great training material. We have a training package and lots of different articles on each of the zones of the app. So definitely jump in here and look through some of those videos when getting set up. And you can also join our webinar series as well by clicking on this button to register. Each of those happen on uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday every week, and they cover different zones of the app. Thanks for listening in to this tutorial. And if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to us, support at opensolar.com. Thanks.